Hello and welcome to Dr. Gackman's checklist for Nintendo Power Magazine. We are going to go uh, starting at volume 20 and we're going to go through all the 1991 issues in this episode. So volume 20 is January 1991, I meant to say, 1991. We got Mega Man 3 on the cover there. These are all my own personal issues, so... You'll notice all the uh, dog earring and tears and stuff. <laughs> um, these are ones that I've collected or ones that I, when I was a sus subscriber, which we'll get to that here in a little bit. But the they went from, uh, in 1990, they had bi-monthly. This is the first year that they start doing complete months, like, you know, one issue or one volume every month. And also they went back to having the um, glue binding instead of the staple binding. So that means that the center folds or the posters in there are center folds instead of them being uh, staple bound into the center of the magazine. And um, when in doing that, they have um, uh, the back portion of the posters um, are usually just like the end of a review of a game that they were doing in previous pages um, or, you know, tips or, or tricks or they have maps or sometimes it's its own separate kind of poster, but not really. But we'll go through all of those. Uh, this is Bart versus the Space Mutants, Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. I always thought it was Bart versus the Space Mutants, not Bart Simpson, but maybe... Um, this is, some of these are funny named and you'll see that later, um, either because they were works in progress. So the name was, uh, undergoing changes before the games got released. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, Gremlins 2, <laughs> but that's not a part of this. This is the centerfold was Bart Simpson. There's a couple Simpsons games on the NES. So, um, and then on the back of that, there is, um, Scenes of the Crime, Deja Vu. So it's just a bunch of stuff for the Deja Vu game. We're at volume 21, which is February 1991, and that's um, Star Tropics. A franchise that I, I hope Nintendo goes back to someday. So yeah, there's a little tear there, as you can see. Um, the centerfold in this one was Metal Storm. Um, Oftentimes you will see in these they'll have uh, a centerfold and then the next issue they'll actually have the cover. And that's the case with uh, Metal Storm. Next uh, volume will actually have the cover. Now this is when they first started covering uh, Game Boy games. So here's a special feature on early uh, Game Boy games. Now this is, this is Nintendo changing uh, in late 80s, early 90s. They they went from now you're playing with power in the commercials to you know they had Nintendo Power uh, now you're playing with portable power for Game Boy and then when Super Nintendo starts to come out they had the commercials of now you're playing with Super Power and these were this was a a triple tiered approach they had the lower end for NES they had the higher end for Super NES and then they had the uh, portable market pretty much all to themselves even though they had a lot of competition with the Game Boy. But I like this. This is like almost like a figure, but it's also it's like made of clay. They would do that a lot. I mean, the first uh, volume you have uh, Mario Two, Super Mario Brothers Two, and it's clay. So that's really cool. I like the kind of art that they did with this kind of stuff. And here's uh, Star Tropics. This is uh, some maps on the back of the centerfold. And like I said, Metal Storm is on the cover of this one. Now, this one's pretty beat up. Uh, this was one that I collected later on. I may replace it later in the future, but this is my volume 22, which is um, March 1991. The centerfold was Battletoads. Battletoads was... Whew, man. <clears throat> and... Uh, <clears throat> Here's a boy in his blob in Operation C for the Game Boy special feature on the next page after the centerfold. But Battletoads, man, was... It was something. Uh, that was the pinnacle of the Trade West rare days. 
in my opinion. Uh, of course, Rare had their day during the Nintendo 64 and, and before that with Donkey Kong Country, but those were mainly things that, you know, were very Nintendo-ish or Nintendo-published and, and all that. But Battletoads was kind of like their own baby. Um, and, man, that was a... That was, that was a fun time. Now, on the back of the Battletoads uh, centerfold, there is Adventure Island 2. Some uh, tips on the levels. Uh, Power Blade is the next cover of Volume 23. So what is that? We are at uh, April, I believe, 1991. Because the last one was March. And, uh, yeah, this one, I think my back cover has is, is got a big corner of it ripped off. But, uh, anyways, here's Sim City, and this, this is an interesting thing. I love, there's the KNES for KNES News. <laughs> um, I, I love the, uh, the little Godzilla-esque T-Rex in there. <laughs> the, uh, artwork is kind of a little... Primitive. Uh, it's obviously New York because they got the uh, Twin Towers in the back there. But uh, yeah, there's another Game Boy here with, uh, I think this is R-Type and some other games. Ultima. Man, Ultima was a thing back in the day, you know? Um, and then here's Scat, not to be confused with the yeah, let's not go there. Uh, special Cybernetic Attack Team. This is uh, some of the stages on the back of the centerfold for SimCity. Um, now we're back, and now we're out at uh, Vice Project Doom on the cover of Volume 24, uh, which is May 1991. Uh, in the middle, centerfold, we've got Disney's Tailspin. Coming soon to your NES. Uh, this is from Capcom. Man, Capcom days for Disney. Oh, nice. There's Battle Unit Zeoth. I, I loved I loved mecha type stuff. I was into Metroid, uh, which isn't really mecha, but like it's a it's a cyber suit. And likewise, I was into um, you know Macross and the giant robots and stuff like that. And uh, you know Robotech, uh, Voltron. And then, you know, Bubblegum Crisis later on. But yeah, Battle Unit Zeoth was was one of those things that I really wanted to get into. And then when they advertised uh, with the um, the NEC Turbo Graphics and they had, you know, uh, Lords of Thunder and, 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 you know, all of those type of shooter games and stuff that had big giant robots and uh, that was cool stuff. Anyways, here's uh, the Lone Ranger. There's a map of the Old West uh, on the back of that centerfold. Now we're at the next volume, which is Battletoads. Man, I love Battletoads. Um, volume 25, this would be, what are we at? I said the last one was April, May. Is this June already? June 1991. Uh, the centerfold here is Super Spy Hunter, not to be confused with Spy Hunter. Um, then there's more Game Boy features there. It's kind of funny how quickly the Game Boy came out and then the Super Nintendo came out. You'll start to see some Super Nintendo stuff in here. Um, this is the NES Open Tournament Golf Course layout on the back of that centerfold. Now this was not golf. This was NES uh, Open Tournament. This is actually a game that they later on would push on virtual console and you know push uh i think it was on the nes classic system and it was also a part of the uh if anybody knows about this the 3ds the ambassador program where they gave you free games uh, for being an early adopter of the 3ds sort of as a pseudo apology for they lower the price right away on the 3ds um whole other story there but NES Open Golf was one of those um, games that they pushed for that, and they really emphasized uh, Mario being in that game. So, um, more of a bigger deal than regular NES Golf. So, one of the black box original launch games. 
Volume 26, I believe this is, are we at July already, 1991? Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, it was such kind of a goofy cover because no likeness to, unlike the Batmans, um, no likeness to what was going on in the movie. But, you know, uh, maybe they couldn't get the rights to do that. But regardless, it's still a, a cool cover and it was a cool movie. And in the centerfold, here's another one of those things where they had the working title. And if you look at early pictures in Nintendo Power Magazine of Metroid 2 on Game Boy, they weren't actually calling it Metroid 2. It almost seemed like they were trying to do a port of Metroid, original Metroid, on Game Boy. Uh, and then this says, the universe has expanded, coming soon for Game Boy, produced by Nintendo of America. Now, see, this is one of those things uh, that makes me wonder, was Nintendo of America really pushing uh, Metroid here in America? Um, starring Samus Aran, they, they were emphasizing that it was female. This is about one of the only times that you'll see the cyber suit representing breasts <laughs> for, for Samus. Um, every other time, you don't, you don't know if it's a man or a woman, uh, that was the big surprise of Metroid when you when you beat it under a certain amount of time you got to see oh Samus was actually a, a woman you know blah 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 uh, here's some uh, pictures of some more Game Boy games near towards the beginning of its lifespan you got Roger Rabbit and Navy Seals and man cool stuff on the back of that centerfold oh we're getting into superpower now in the works for Super Nintendo Entertainment System. For the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, we got Super Mario World, we got F-Zero, we got, they got Darius there. I mean, that's a cool picture to have. They got Goemon, Legend of Mystical Ninja, known in America. Um, just all kinds of cool stuff that they were showing off. Uh, there's Actraiser, there's Final Fight. I mean, Legend of Zelda which ended up being, they were calling it, as you can see, Zelda 3 there, but it was, um, you know, linked to the past. But yeah, there we go. That was the centerfold on that one. Now, this is my very first issue, and this is actually not just when I got my first issue, but this is actually my first issue. You can see it's in still in not great shape, but it's in better shape than those some of those previous ones because those other ones I bought much later on to complete my collection. Uh, but this was one that was actually mailed to me. It doesn't have my address on it. I think I took off most of those stickers. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is volume 27, which I do believe is um, August 1991. I'm probably already wrong. I've already lost track of the months. But um, I'm not a Mega Man fan, but this was cool. This is when I first subscribed and the and what caused me to subscribe or actually it wasn't me it was my mom did it for me because I I didn't have an allowance I didn't we didn't have a lot of money uh, but she got it for me she knew I was into Nintendo even though I didn't have a system and she was not going to let me hook up a system to her television anyway <laughs> but <clears throat> I think she'd already made up her mind she was going to get me a Game Boy because I could not stop talking about it and she loved the idea of oh it's not going to hook up to my TV so it'll you know keep them busy or whatever so she got me a Nintendo Power subscription, which was pretty crazy, um, and this is the first issue that I got. And it was around the time when they had, it was a $60 value, kind of like the Dragon Warrior thing that they did, um, but this was much later. They had four strategy guides, one for NES, Game Boy, Super NES, and they had a Mario Mania one. Those were the sh first strategy guides, like the Nintendo Power uh Player's Guides is actually what they were calling them. Um, and that starts a whole long line of those. But I got those first four for free. Now, I kept complaining every time a new one would come out because I had to buy that one or they weren't giving it away for free. When you subscribed every year for several years after that, they gave you another uh, strategy guide or player's guide, I should say, um, as a part of the subscription. But there was always, they would always release like, three or four of them at a time or throughout the year they had like you know up to six or more uh so it was hard to collect them and back then i like i said we didn't have money and i was spending the money on the games if i had any money and here was the magazine you know really enticing it really 
Nintendo games in general, too, also have a collect-a-thon mania in them. And I kind of think it kind of brainwashed us kids to collect more. And not just the games, but the the systems, the the peripherals, the magazines, soundtracks, little doodads and, and goodies that they'd have in the catalogs and stuff. But get into that more later. But here's Final Fantasy uh, Legend, Mega Man, Days of Thunder, and the Game Boy feature. I mean, these were major third-party titles on the NES that are now coming to Game Boy. I mean, it was it was pretty cool idea. And then here's Star Wars finally coming to the NES from Japanese Victor Company. And on the back of that, centerfold was um, Darkman, which, you know, you wouldn't think that that would be a, made into a video game, but it was, and it was it was a cool game. Um, for a licensed game, that is. <clears throat> also in this uh, volume was this, the uh, Product Maintenance Troubleshooting and Service Guide. So on the next page, they actually have, like, what you can do to try to help troubleshoot problems with your NES and even your Game Boy um, maintenance tips. And, um, you know, that, that was pretty cool. And then they had authorized service centers. Now, this is the number that they changed it to, 1-800-255-3700. That is still Nintendo's number today. But before then, they had a different number, but this was like the Nintendo Power thing. They had the uh, the tip line. They had, the, they, they kind of structured it all together. Um, and here is, you know, lists of all the states and um, their authorized service centers. And here I am in Ohio. And, you know, always it's got Cincinnati and Columbus and stuff. But there was actually Dayton, which is actually where I'm from. It says Empire Electronics. That was a thing. And I'm, I live currently off of Smithville. So this is kind of cool. This is 1944 Smithville. Uh, they're not there anymore, um, unfortunately. But that was the authorized place to go. And I remember later on when I did have problems with my Super Nintendo, it was actually problems with my TV. But... You know, my mom, of course, was like, no, we're not getting you a new TV, so we got to fix this system. There was nothing wrong with the system. Um, but we we took it somewhere, and it was closer to the Dayton Mall. So there was other authorized centers out there. Now, me personally, I'm an authorized center at GameSwap for helping people uh, fix their systems. Um, they're much older now, and there's a lot more problems, and I, I help with that. So this was something that was kind of like a foreshadowing of me <laughs> uh, uh, I think they even gave me a magnet one time when I went to it and it was it was cool um, I have it on my fridge still I th yeah I did get it from from there um, but yeah that's cool uh, but as we look at this next page because here's this is the bulletin board here that they would have and you could order back issues and the phone directory like I was saying before there was a tip line and there was the 1-800-255-3700 and all that stuff. Um, but on the next page, you'll see something. There's Dan Osen, who still works at Nintendo. I saw him in a recent video a couple of years ago uh, promoting uh, Breath of the Wild, which was mind-blowing to me. I didn't know he was still there. He used to have this thing called uh, when Nintendo Power started going on having a website. Um he uh, had his own little corner, kind of like how he does in Nintendo Power Magazine every once in a while. He actually knows Japanese. And look at that. That's a Super Famicom. Now, this was before they even showed off the Super NES. This was before they revealed pretty much anything. I think it was at a CES show that they finally started talking about stuff. And here he is. He's talking about, hey, I'm already in Japan playing Super Famicom. Of course, they're not going to say that. And... It's kind of surprising Nintendo Power Magazine was even doing um, stuff like this where they were showing off Japanese hardware. They usually, I don't think that they would normally do that. But for whatever reason, they knew Super NES was going to be a big thing. And it was. Um, they were pushing for it. And Nintendo Power Magazine was one of those things that they used to push it. And there we go. Super Mario World.
on the cover. So this is the su first Super Nintendo game to get a cover. And this would be uh, volume 28, which is my second issue. And that was part of the reason I was getting, I was a huge big into Super Nintendo before I even got one. And my mom, I think she knew she opened up a can of worms by getting me Nintendo Power Magazine and getting me a Game Boy. And then eventually I had to get my own TV, took up a Super Nintendo 2, and then later on I got an NES. And, you know, rest is history, of course. But this was, uh, what did I say the last one was? August. So this would be September, I believe. Let's go back and make sure that I'm doing this right. So this is January, February, March, April, May. June, July, August, September. Yep, yeah. this is September. And F-Zero, man, oh, I still love F-Zero to this day. There's Pico, that's the one that I always um, uh, liked in the beginning. Um, Captain Falcon is the cover boy. There's Dr. Stewart. But Samurai Goro was in, ended up being my favorite to play as because, wow, you know. Oh, man, I love F-Zero. There's Tecmo Bowl, Marvel Madness, and Final Fantasy Adventure. <clears throat> Which, if you if you know that enough, it's part of the Mana series, and that's, that's something that happens later on. It's a big game for me. There's Worm on the back, some uh, maps and stage layouts of, of that game on the back of the centerfold for um, F-Zero. Now we're on to the next volume, Star Trek which is, I said the last one, September, so this would be October of 1991, Volume 29, Star Trek. The centerfold here is the Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy. Now, coming soon to your uh, NES, it's Taito, or Taito, or however you want to say that. Here's the Game Boy stuff here. Bart Simpson, Camp Deadly. Oh my god, the game was so much fun, I loved it. Um... But this is a game that's super expensive if you, can, if you can find it. There's two Flintstones games. The second one came out super late in the NES's life. You'll find a lot of late NES games, and then again in the future, late Super NES and late 64 games that are really expensive because they um, came out late in the lifespan, and you know everybody's already making shelf space for the new games. They didn't make as many of these games because they knew, oh, well, the new systems are out, so this is going to sell as well. And, you know, this game is uh, super duper expensive. On the back of that centerfold is, if it's the second one, if I'm right about that. I think the first one was just called Flintstones, and then the second one was The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. But I could be wrong about that. Um, this is Shatterhand, some uh, stuff up, uh, about the game there. Final Fantasy 2. So already the next Super Nintendo game that they're showing off is Final Fantasy 2. And this is a deep history. Now, Final Fantasy 2 is actually 4 in Japan, but this is the second one that they brought over here to America. And this was a big deal. I mean, th this was a big deal. <laughs> this is Volume 30, which is... Um, so we were October, so now we're in November of 1991. We're getting to the holiday season. Super Nintendo is the news. I mean, this is the deal. Um, here's the center, uh, centerfold. It's Faceball 2000, which was a pseudo uh, 3D game for Game Boy. Um, that was a big deal. And here's Double Dragon. Another Trade West game, uh, Battletoads, Baseball 2000, Kid Icarus, which, you know, they are already, they're already doing Metroid, so here's Kid Icarus, and um, Word, what is this? Word Ha? That's from Meldak. I did like some Meldak games um, back in the day, uh, mainly Game Boy games, because that's what they seem to be making more of. On the back of that, there's a Tom and Jerry um review. And then the last issue that we're going to go over for 1991 is December. It's volume 31 and it shows Metroid. But this isn't Metroid. This is actually Metroid 2. But it says Galactic New Game Boy Hit. Now, I didn't have a Super Nintendo yet. My mom was like, you know, you can't have one. Um, but I got pictures of myself opening up 
Metroid 2, and man, I was really into Metroid. Uh, like I said, I was into the robots and the cyber suits and the, and the giant robots and, and mechs and all that stuff. And uh, Metroid was one of those games where I didn't have it because I didn't have an NES, but I would play it over at other friends' houses. And I love the password system. I love being able to enter in a bunch of stuff. I love Game Genie kind of stuff too. Um, to like make your own game and start different parts of the game and blah, blah, blah. And that I thought was really cool. But on top of that, I was actually good at this game and better than the people who actually owned it. So Metroid 2, I was all over it. I, I read everything about it on Nintendo Power Magazine. I even started going into other magazines, um, EGM, Game Pro, and stuff like that, just to find out more information about Metroid 2, which up and until then, they were just calling it Metroid on Game Boy. So, and then here's another late Super NES, or late NES game. The third Turtles game, Manhattan Project, which is awesome. That's a pretty cool poster there. There's Metroid 2. They finally have the name of it. Return of Samus. Um, yeah. On Game Boy. And then on the back of that, there is the Tiny Toons Adventures game. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of this. But I going back to Metroid again, that was a huge thing. Um, it's, you know, uh, it's still huge to me. Uh, Metroid is probably, or it is not probably, it is my favorite, uh, game franchise. And that means that it had to make Nintendo my favorite video game company. And, uh, you would know that if you saw my apartment and especially with these Nintendo Power Magazines, you can already see that in my meticulous telling of these stories in this, in these videos, but... Man, uh, we're going to go to 1992 in the next video, which um, should be next month. So um, I, I kind of want to do these videos more often so that I can cover more years faster. Um, but we'll see as time goes on because I've been really busy with other projects and stuff. But thanks for watching and uh, happy collecting out there. This is a hard magazine to go from beginning to end and get all of the inserts and stuff. And I really hope that these videos are helping and uh, you getting all the centerfolds, all the posters, all the inserts, catalogs, all the extras, um, calendars, and everything that came with these. So as, as you'll see in later years, they started adding more and more goodies. We're only just now getting started. This is the first year that they actually had a full year of magazines one a month they were bi-monthly before then and so here we go uh get ready for 1992 next month uh in the next video thank you for watching and happy collecting out there